Hey, this is Michael with X-Force PC. I want to talk about all the different ways you can use the quad screen system. And so this is going to be kind of a long video, but it's going to be broken into pieces showing you all the different configurations you can do with the quad screen. The first way is probably my favorite and probably Tom's favorite as well, is to have four individual windows of X-Plane. So we're not using any stretching algorithms or anything like that. This is four independently rendered windows of X-Plane. And there's no distortion. So sometimes with, and I better give myself some throttle here, sometimes with using multiple displays, you get distortion out towards the edges, the far edges of the screen. But since we're rendering individual windows of X-Plane, there is no distortion. Now, as we're flying along, you can take your hat switch and you can look all around in the cockpit and you can see down below, everything kind of flows together. And it makes for a nice, nice looking setup. You can you kind of, uh, you know, this is sort of the standard position, but I would probably raise myself a bit so that maybe the top row here is available up on the top screen and then everything else down below, you can see your throttle here in the Baron. And I'll just open up the Cessna 172 for a comparison. And so here we are in the Cessna 172. Again, I'd probably raise myself a little bit, possibly. But you do have the issue of the wings being above you, so maybe you wouldn't do that quite so much. And again, you can pan all around. Everything flows nicely. Um, and, of course, you can also take your, um, your GPS and you can put it wherever you want it. And you can even pop it out into a window and you just drag it anywhere you want to put it and drop it. Uh, and that's true on any of the configurations I'm going to show you. Now let's talk about the positives and the negatives of this. Of course, the positive is anytime you switch planes, you have that plane's actual... Uh, instrument panel down here as rendered by the artist who created the plane. Everything flows nicely. Um, so that is really the, the main benefit. Um, there's not really any having, you don't have to set anything up down here, create a panel to put down here. Um, it's already there for you. The disadvantage of this particular setup is since we're running three individual windows of X-Plane, it's more taxing on the system. So therefore, this produces the worst frame rate of any of the configurations, I believe, that I'm going to show you. We're still getting uh, 30 to 40 frames per second right now. We're actually over Columbia, South Carolina, which is our town, the town that we're in and that Austin, who created X-Plane, is in. And I'm hovering anywhere 30 to 40 frames per second, and we have the rendering options turned up pretty high. But again, this particular way of running the quad screen will give you the lowest frame rate. The other thing is X-Plane is not touch friendly per se. So you can't, even though this is a touch screen, you can't really go down here and, and reasonably expect to be able to flip these switches and, and turn the starter and, and the heading bug and all that. So you'd still have to grab the mouse and come over here and move these knobs with the mouse. So that's the disadvantage. One more time. Advantage, obviously the continuity that you're getting here between all the screens. The fact you don't have, a, have to set up a special panel down here. The disadvantage, a little bit lower frame rate, even though we're getting 40 right now, and not touch friendly down here. So that's method number one to set up the quad screen. So the second way of using X-Plane would be to use the bottom monitor as an accessory display. So we have increased our frame rate uh, by removing one window of X-Plane from the system, and we're up uh, close to 60 frames per second. And there's a couple things you can do down here. First of all, you can hit M to bring up the map, and then you can drag the map down here and even maximize it. And there you have your, your moving map uh, down here, including all of the um, various pieces of data that you might need for navigation. And we have that down here on the bottom screen. And that only costs us about five frames per second. So we're at 55 frames per second 
Uh, we were at 60 before I opened this window. So again, this is using X-Plane as an, ex uh, this bottom screen is an accessory display. Other things you can do, you can take your um, Garmin and you can pop these out into windows and stick them down here. And you could even go up top here and just totally get rid of the cockpit if you don't want any obstruction gives you nice viewability, although it may not be the most realistic thing because in the plane itself you are going to have obstructions. Um, so you can also, let's open up a different plane. Let's look at the Baron. Um, so on the Baron you can sort of do the same thing. I'd probably raise myself a bit. Um, you can take the, the Garmin and, whoops, I have to pop it into a window first. You know, the, the 530 down here and then you could take, got to get down here and, um, I was thinking there was a 430 in here. If there was a 430, you could click on it and drag it down here. You could also hit M to bring up your map and put that into a window. And in this case, you know, we'd shrink it a bit so it could fit down here with the 430. Um, there we go. And so again, this is using X-Plane uh, and the fourth display as sort of an accessory display. And, of course, you can open a browser down here. Um, you can go and um, look at anything you want on the Internet while still flying up here. But the most common way you'd use this accessory display would be the way we're showing you here. So, again, this is X-Plane using an accessory display for various windows. Um, the advantage of this is it has a little bit higher frame rate than four individual windows of X-Plane. We're getting about 45 instead of 40 frames per second. Um, disadvantage is, I guess this is not touch friendly down here, you're still having to grab the mouse for these things um, down here. And you can't see your entire instrument panel, so to see your whole instrument panel you'd have to pan down like that to, uh, to see everything. Alright, so there's the second way of running X-Plane on the quad screen system. Hey Michael with X-Force PC, providing you with yet another way to use um, the quad screen system. So in this case, we have three individual windows of X-Plane still, and we've got Air Manager running down here. So what you would typically do in this case is you would change your view to forwards with scenery only, and you'd use the instruments down here. Now this is the bear, excuse me, the Cessna 172 panel. And it's kind of nice because this is this costs ten extra dollars, but it is totally worth it over the default panel that comes with Air Manager. Um, it has everything you need on one screen. It has the radios, which the other panel does not. Um, it also has a nifty little thing here that, that pops out the um, the fuel uh, where you where you can switch to left or right or both, and you can shut off the fuel. And that's just a little button that pops out. Um, so this is a really nice panel. The other thing that's good is when we put a fourth display of X-Plane down here, it has a, the system takes a frame rate hit, but with Air Manager down here, it really is a super mild amount of frames per second that you lose. We're getting 60 frames per second down here while using this. Now also, everything down here is touch enabled, these knobs. So if you want to uh, turn the, the knobs, you can do that here. You can tune, sorry if I'm getting in the way, the frequencies. You can hit the active and standby button there. So everything is touch aware down here. Now, so let's talk about the uh, pluses and the minuses of this. The positives of this is um, since we're running three individual windows of X-Plane, we are not getting uh, any distortion towards the far edges of the screen. It does cost us a little bit in frame rate, but we're still getting 60 frames per second in this particular spot. Um, the other advantage here is everything is touch enabled down here. You have no obstructions up top to block your view. And of course, you know, everything is, uh, is very smooth. So I'll uh, un unpause it, but you'll see here everything is smooth. Everything tracks nicely. All of our instruments are updating down below. And then if we switch planes, like to the Baron, there's a Baron panel that comes with um, Air Manager. Now this is again the upgraded paid panel is what I call it. 
Um, this costs 10 extra dollars for this panel, but it's totally worth it once again because it's much better than the standard panel that comes with Air Manager. Someone out there uh, sort of customized this panel and just made it look really, really great. And so we, if you're going to be flying the Baron, we definitely recommend paying the extra 10 bucks to get this panel, which is much, much nicer. So again, this is yet another way to run X-Plane, three individual windows of X-Plane, and we have Air Manager running down here. Air Manager costs about 70-ish dollars, it's 60 euros, and so it depends on the value of the euro, but it's 60 euros, and then for these premium panels for the Baron and for the um, Cessna 172, those are 10 extra dollars, but totally worth it if you're going to be flying those planes on a regular basis. Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. So the last way to run, or the last one I'm going to show you at least, to run the quad screen system would be to run NVIDIA Surround up here at the top and then use this bottom display for Air Manager or for an accessory display or whatever, but right now we have Air Manager running. The advantage of using NVIDIA Surround up here is it combines all three displays into one really wide display. But the disadvantage of that is when you get out to the far edges of the screen on either end, and I'm talking about probably from about here out, so you know, two-thirds of the way out on this screen and out, you start to get some stretching or warping occur. Um, I don't know if you can really pick up on any of that here, or even if I've got the, doesn't like I even have the camera position in the greatest way, but um, over on the far, far edges of the screens, you will see some distortion, sort of like a fisheye effect. The advantage of running this way is much higher frame rate, because we're rendering one window of X-Plane up here, albeit a big one, it's only one window of X-Plane that we're rendering, and therefore you get higher frame rate. I up the op number of objects here, and I'm still getting 60 frames per second, whereas when I was running three individual windows of X-Plane, I was getting uh, about 40 frames per second. So we're getting much higher frame rate, and I've even increased the number of objects. With the caveat, you get distortion out towards the edges of the screen. So I think that kind of covers the pluses and the minuses of doing it this way. Um, I know Tom is a, is a big fan of not doing it this way. He likes to have four individual or at least three individual windows of X-Plane to avoid said distortion. Um, of course, you can always bring the, the cockpit up, but you probably wouldn't want to do that since you're running your instruments down here. But that can be done. It does pan around. Um, you know, you can look all around and... And, and see what all is going on. And again, with the caveat, you get distortion out towards the far edges of the left and the right screen.